Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're continuing on our journey through digging through topics in pre-algebra, goal two. We want to finish up a little bit with our fractions. There's a couple of topics that I didn't quite get to in the other video. And then we're going to talk about converting fractions to decimals and vice versa so that in the next video, we can slowly transition to our way to decimals just in general. I remind, uh, I remind you guys that fractions for me are always going to be something that's a little bit easier. Uh, and we're going over to the decimals, and I'm I'm low key not looking forward to making those. Ooh, yeah, meh. I did a thing. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now and actually get to actual work. So, let's go through here. First things first. We're gonna start very basics. This again, it's a middle school thing. You've probably heard it a bunch of times. The reciprocal of a number to be a reciprocal means that you're going to flip your fraction. And I'm also going to give you a preview into Algebra 1. The reciprocal in higher level math is no longer called the reciprocal. They decided to make, as if reciprocal wasn't a fancy enough number, they decided to even make it fancier. And later on in life, this will be called the, here's a word for you, multiplicative in Verse. Look at that beautiful mess of letters, the multiplicative inverse, aka the reciprocal, aka the flipped fraction. So since we know now that it is nothing more than a multiplicative inverse, aka reciprocal is nothing more than a flipped fraction, here's our fraction. Let's flip it. 5 over 7. 2, all whole numbers are over 1. Flip your fraction. 1 half. 1 tenth, flip your fraction. 10 over 1, which is just 10. 19, Flip your fraction, 1 over 19. 13 is a whole number, so it's over 1. So flip your fraction, 1 over 13. And then there's a whole actual fraction fraction, so we're going to flip that to 10. 10, what the heck? I'm going to flip that to 11 over 10. That's a terribly written 3. So that's what reciprocals look like. And now that we know what it is, now it's time to talk about what it does. So division using a whole number. Since what we're going to do is going to be a variation, or well, it's not even variation. It's exactly this. We are going to, and you might have seen this in middle school. You have KF, or no, KFC. Keep, keep change flip. KCF. Keep, change, flip. So we're going to keep, change, and flip. Flip. I feel like it's called something differently, but this is how I learned it when I was in school. So um, let me know in the comments what the acronym was for you guys. So what we're going to do, there's, if we look at this little box of division that we're doing, there's three pieces here. You have the fraction, you have the division, and then you also have, it's over one, the fraction. What we're doing is we're going to, step one, we're going to keep the seven over six. Step two, we're going to change the division into multiplication. Step three, we're going to flip our fraction because we're using our reciprocal. So keep, change, flip, keep, change, flip. That's how it outlines. And now that it's fraction multiplication, we're doing exactly like we did in the last video. Uh, can we do our little bait and switch? Do seven and eight and one and six? No, we can't. So seven times one equals seven. Six times eight equals 48. And there's gonna be our final answer. So now again, we're going to keep the eight over nine. We're going to change the division and we're going to flip the fraction. And I can already see this one does have a bait and switch. So if you didn't see my last video, what I mean by bait and switch, I'm looking over here and I know that those eights are division. And since these, I'm gonna put it in quotation marks, fractions are a little more than setups for division and we're looking to train our brain to see fractions as division, I'm going to do a quick little bait and switch because here's the thing. Does 9 times 8 have a different answer than 8 times 9? And the answer is nah. So we're going to switch those places. So I'm going to switch that to 8 over 8 times 1 over 9. 8 divided by, that's not a fraction bar, that's division. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times any number is itself so we have one night now we get to look over here we're going to keep and then change and then flip five and six no one and three no okay so there's no bait and switch here so we're just going to multiply across five times one equals five three times six equals 18 
and that's going to be our final answer. So that's the basic setup and now let's see what we can do to make things a little bit, um, I'm not going to say easier, but we want to kind of try to figure ourselves out to know how to write these. What I'm looking for when I look at these list of numbers for this topic is I'm looking at the very obvious, well or at least it tends to look very obvious, um, answer to a multiplication. So the 10 over 27 goes here. And the result is because once I know where it goes in the multiplication, I actually know where it goes in the division because it's always going to be labeled first. And then what goes into these two paces almost doesn't matter. They're not as, they're fluid. They're not fixed. So I'm just going to put it in order here. So we'll have two thirds, five ninths, two thirds, five ninths. Over here, same thing, the 15 over 56, that's the big one, so we're gonna put that over here, 15 over 56. And then it has to be labeled first over here, so 15 over 56. And then, I don't care about the rest, we'll just put them in order. So three sevenths, five eighths, three sevenths, five eighths. So again, the smaller numbers, they are much more fluid. They can go kind of wherever. They're pretty chill. The ones that are OCD are going to be your bigger numbers. The the ones that are very obviously multiplied, those are the ones that have very specific and deliberate locations. They always go in the answer box and the first division key. The answer box and the first division key. All right, so now this topic. Getting the screen grab for this topic, if I'm allowed to complain as an editor, just drove me out of my ever loving mind and explaining this is going to be a little bit of a pain but I'll try to work your way through it because when you look down here I'm going to write this in the corner because I need to just get more visual space this right here visually is kind of a mess you have red lines you have blue lines you have dotted lines none of it makes any sense how are you supposed to read this and they do try to color code it to make it easier for you um, but this is not my favorite, mm, we'll call it a setup. So what we're going to do, let's see here, is we, how do I do this? Um, there is a difference. We're going to ignore the red lines for a second. When we're looking at an actual box, and it might be, you know, divvied up in some way, the actual thick line, that's a unit. And the in-between line, that's going to be your fraction. So for example, if we're looking at um, two fifths, so instead of unit, actually, I will say in fraction, I'll say numerator and denominator, that'll be easier. This is your denominator and this is your numerator. That's what we're looking to do. Okay, and you can kind of see it a, a little bit here. You can see that you have the one, I'll put this a little bit darker. You have the one listed here. Oops, can't even do that right. You have the one listed here and they do go through the effort of labeling that. And then as you count, there's one, two, three, four, five setups. So I still did it wrong when I was writing this out, Lord in heaven. See, even the trained math teacher will sometimes have a little bit of difficulty because I understand what it's doing, but explaining it seems to be just a pain in the hiney for me. So, again, I was right the first time. This is your unit, and this is your fraction. So, we are trying to cut this into... We have... What we're looking for is we want to find four units. So here we have one two units, so that's not it. Here we have one, two, three, four units. So this one's an option. We have one, two, three, four units. This one's an option. This one has one, two, three. So just by doing that, we can cross out two of our options because they're not useful to us and that will make life a little bit easier. The next thing, you is to look at the red bars is we want to have divided by two fifths so we are going to want let's see here the red bars are our answers right so then we're cutting it into next thing we're going to look at is our numerators is it's because it's two fifths 
we are clumping these into groups of two. So that's what the red bars are. So this is going to be the red, the red bars. And this is going to be our units. Hopefully that will make it a little bit better. So four units, we were looking for one, two, three, four units that we got. And now for the red bars, the red bar should cover two of these little mini blocks. So you can see this one, a red bar only covers one block. What we want is for two. So this one covers two blocks. That's what we want. So this is the final option we have. That's what they're trying to do. So visually, even though this is a mess, there's only really two things that you're looking at. You are looking at how many dark blue lines are and how much of your red um, lines cover. And that's based on the two numbers that you're going to be looking at, your units and your numerator. Once that's done, all that's left for your final answer down here is to actually count out how many boxes that you end up having. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes. So our final answer is going to be ten. And we can check that because we're going to keep, we're going to change, we're going to flip. We have a little bait and switch that we can do. So four over two, which simplifies to two times five equals ten. And that confirms the fact that this ended up being the correct answer. So that's one of these problems that took a lot of explanation and I hope to God that sounded remotely clear and accurate. Next topic is signed fraction division. It's just regular fraction division, but just with signs. So we are going to keep 18, what am I doing? We're going to keep, we're going to change, we're going to flip. And now because of the signs, we're going to do the signs first. There's one negative and one positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, signs are done, now let's do this as normal. Uh, is there any bait and switch? No. So 11 times one is 11, three times three is nine, and there's our answer. So now we're gonna keep 37 over six. We're gonna change, and then we're going to flip. Double negative is a positive. Uh, there's no bait and switch to be had here, so 37 times one is 37. Six times six is 36. And there's our answer. We're going to keep going. I can already see a negative times a negative is a positive, so I'm not even going to worry about my writing that down. We're going to keep, we're going to change, and then we're going to flip. Now this one, I can look at that 27 and nine, and I definitely know that I can do some division there. So that's a bait and switch, and I'm going to do my bait and switch. So 27 over nine times four over, oh, the 32 divides two, ah, nice. So what is 27 divided by nine? Three. What is 32 divided by four? Uh, oh my God, my brain, turn on, is eight, I believe. And so now, um, let me write that so it's a little bit neater. Nine over one times one over eight. Nine times one is nine. One times eight is eight. And we figured out earlier that the answer is going to be positive. There you go. Same thing over here. We're going to, I know my final answer is going to be negative. So now we have 21 over 28. That's the keep, then the change, then the flip. Since I know my answer is negative, I'm not gonna put it in here because I don't wanna clutter up my work. I know there's other examples uh, and other topics where you actually do wanna track your um, uh, science, especially for order of operations. Now, let's see here, 20, there is a bait and switch here. So I'm gonna do some flipping, 21 over seven times four over 28. What's 21 divided by seven? Three. What's four divided by 28? Seven, so that's three over one times one over seven. Three times one is three, one times seven is seven. And there is our answer. All right, next up, word problem. I know, I know, I know, involving fractions and specifically division, so they're kind of giving it away. The road crew can repave uh, one twelfth. Whoops, what did that look like? I don't know. Eraser, what did you do? There we go. All right, one twelfth. They must repave the po 
we la, 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 la. they must repave a road that is two-thirds mile huh? all right the trick for these topics this topic is, i should say is the problems is to know which number comes first and you're kind of looking for what your final is so for example the road is a total length of two-thirds so this is going to come first in our division two-thirds divided by and then our other number is one twelfth so we're going to keep we're going to change and we're going to flip uh, 3 and 12 does reduce and I'm not going to do the action I'm not going to write out the bait and switch I'm more interested in doing the math math right now so 12 divided by 3 is 4 2 times 4 is going to be 8 let's see here 2 fifths each long the pipe is 10 feet long that's my total so that's my first number so 10 divided by 2 fifths so that's going to be how did I write 18 when I literally said 10 what is wrong with me so that becomes keep change and flip that's over one so there is a bait and switch here so 10 divided by 2 is 5 5 times 5 our final answer is 25 okay and now that finally wraps up all of our division with fractions and now we finally get to talk a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot about converting because we want to start taking all of those skills with fractions which are honestly easier for Ms. Dubois and convert them to all of the decimals so that Ms. Dubois can suffer. So to remind you this is way back from I think goal one is when you see 0 0.8 you read that as 8 tenths tenths because that's the decimal place. So that tells you that it's going to be 8 tenths, your literal decimal. 0 0.3 is a fraction, so that's going to be 3 tenths. That is, you read, I know that everyone reads that as 0.27, but what that is is 27 hundredths. And since that's your actual answer, 27 hundredths. Now that you understand how that works, let's do it in its simplest form and get used to all of the reducing that we're doing. So for tenths, four tenths now the trick here is and this is a little bit hard for some kids and I do respect the fact that this is a legitimate difficulty curve when you're simplifying a fraction like this you kind of need to see what both numbers are divisible by and if you're weak on your math facts that can be annoying as all get out I happen to know that these are both even numbers so I can divide by two and divide by two four divided by two is two ten divided by two is five and those don't share anything else. I can already kind of tell that that's the simplest form pra fraction. fraction. And alas, the goal one curse happened again. We got a double of a screen grab. So let's make up a different number. Let's do um, 0.5. That is again 5 tenths. So we're going to see if that's divisible. Um, it is divisible. I can see that we can divide by 5 and we can divide by 5 and that becomes 1 half and for all of my friends from earlier uh, in the uh, goal one videos I'm going to remind you the ABC button is your best friend and it pops up again here next we have eight tenths as a fraction that's divisible by two and that's divisible by two because they're both even numbers so four over uh, five okay so that gives us some raw basics and now we're going to talk I'll be honest I'm not going to go into detail here because there's a button for this. So when you're looking at the calculators in my room, I'm actually going to draw out my calculator here. You have the second button. That's going to be important. And then over here somewhere, there's a button. And right above it in that matching light blue is a fraction to dec F to D. That button right here is your fraction to decimal button. And then right underneath it is your A, B, C button. Those are your three most important buttons here. So first things first, I'm going to type in 1.9 into my calculator, and then I'm going to press second fraction to decimal, and that will get me one and nine tenths. It will look on the calculator like one and nine tenths, which some people has a little hard to read because they're not used to that symbol before it, but that symbol is an and. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second and then my fraction button in order to change it to an improper fraction, which in this case is 19 over 10. So I'll be honest, the calculator is going to do it for you. 7.25, I hit second and fraction to decimal, and that will get me two and three fourths. And then second 
and the ABC button, and that will get me 8 plus 3 is 11 over 4. That's what you're looking to do here. Converting a fraction with a denominator, denominator, oh my lord. Converting a fraction with a denominator of 10 or 100 to a decimal. So all you're really doing when you're divided by, you see how many zeros here? That's how many zeros you move over. So that um, 89 moves over one, two spaces to become 0 0.89, 89 hundredths. How many zeros are there? So then I'm going to take my 54 and going to move it over one, two spaces to be 0 0.54, 0 0.54. Six tenths as a decimal, there's one zero, so I'm going to take my six and move it over one spot to become 0 0.6 or 0 and 6 tenths. Same thing is going to happen here. How many zeros are there? Three. So I'm going to take my 46 and move it over one, two, three places. So it becomes, I need a zero for a placeholder, 0 0.046. How many zeros are there? Three. So the 78 becomes one, two, three, zero point, let me write it up, 0 0.078. How many decimals are there here? Three de oh, three decimals again. Wow, they're they're not subtle here. So that becomes 21, and I move it over one, two, three places. So my answer will be 0 0.021. And again, you read that as 21 thousandths because that's three decimal places, and because it's thousandths, that makes sense because that is the number thousand. So next. Converting a proper fraction to a denominator. Um, this is where, again, as the human calculator, my brain no longer understands that this is difficult for students and I have to really kind of slow down and make sure that I'm minding myself and that I'm explaining this accurately. Writing as a decimal. What I'm looking for is times what will get me a hundred, either some kind of 10 or more likely a hundred. That's what I'm shooting for. So for example, if I'm looking at four as a decimal, I can't get that to a 10, but I can get it to 100 if I multiply by 25. And so I'm gonna multiply by 25. So that gets me 25 over 100, which gets me 0.25. Over here, I need to get that. Can I get it to a 10? Yes, I can. I multiply by two, I multiply by two. That gets me four tenths, which gets me 0.4. Now number two. Can I get the number 2 to a 10? Yes, I can. Times 5 times 5. So that gets me 5 tenths, which converts to 0 0.5. That's what they're expecting you to do here for your answers. Uh, let's see here. And now it's the same idea. It's like literally the same thing. It's just that you happen to have a number in front of your decimal. So now I can convert that to tens because times 2 times 2, that's going to be 20 and 4 tenths, so 20.4. It's literally exactly the same thing as this one up here. The only difference is that you have a 20 in front. So 3 fourths, 4, again, I can't get to a 10, but I can get to 100 times 25 times 25. So that's 11 and 75 hundredths, which gets me 11.75. 3 fourths, it Cursed computer, you gave me the same number again. All right, let's pick a different number. Um, if we're doing, let's do another four. Let's do eight and one fourth. So times 25 times 25, that's gonna be eight and 25 hundredths, which gets me 8.25. There we go. All right, next. Now we've been doing, um, we did, Plain fractions, we've done mixed numbers, and now we're going to do improper fractions to a terminating decimal. So if you don't remember the phrase terminating, like the movie The Terminator, you terminate your life. You're going to mean that your decimal ends. Your decimal stops. It ends. And that's what we're looking to do. And if you'll notice... When we're looking at our numbers here, they've picked nice, round, easy numbers that can get to some kind of base of 10, 100, 1,000, etc. because that's ultimately what they're looking for. So let's see here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So I'm gonna multiply everything by four here, times four, times four. So that gets me over 100, 
And then what's that times four? So that's gonna be 4492. And since I'm dividing by 100, the 492 with the decimal moves over one, two places, so 4.92. This one, it's times two to get 100. So that's going to be 122 over 100. So that's 122, move it over two places because it's 100, so 1.22. Here it's 50 again, so times two times two. So that's um, 36, 37, eight, 378. 378 over 100, so 378, and I move it over one, two places to be 3.78. That's what they're expecting you to do here. And now, let's see here. Now we have to a repeating decimal. We just barely, just barely had enough space for this. I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm going to use a calculator for this. So let me, give me two seconds to pull out a calculator because I don't think I have one open. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to straight up do the division. So it's going to be 7 divided by 3. And you'll notice that goes on for all eternity. That's what it means when they say repeating decimal over here. That's the whole point of what repeating decimal is. So that ended up being, what was it, um, 2.3? So this is going to be 2.3, but instead of writing 3 for all eternity, you don't want to spend forever doing that you're going to put a bar over the top to indicate that it's a repeating decimal. If you do it again, so if we do 5 sixths, so 5 divided by 6, you'll notice here, now that one looks a little bit different, that 0.83 repeating. And you'll even hear how I said it, 0.83 repeating. So when I'm writing my 0.83, the bar is only going over the 3 because the 3 is the only one that's being repeated. That's the point for repeating decimals. Um, there's actually some fun stuff that goes on with repeating decimals that I learned in college, but we'll talk about that at another time. For now, that is everything to be had for fractional division. We finally finished that up. We did a whole mess of converting. I'm a little breathless by it. And now we want to have only two more uh, bunches of topics to left. Those will be done in the next series of videos. I will see you then. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. As always, see you in the next one in transmission.